Next on KKL 9 News at 3, breaking news to tell you about the Silmar. Police pursuit ends with several injuries. Sky 9 is live over the scene. We'll take you there. Also, he says his parents made him sleep outside with the dogs. Today, an Orange County teenager takes the stand to testify against them. We're live with the story. District Attorney speaking out about the punishment that he thinks Winona Ryder should face for shoplifting at Saks. And it's her busiest time of the year. We'll take you to the Southland Kitchen where all those Christmas candy canes come from. Live local late breaking, KCAL 9 News at 3 starts right now. Live local late breaking, you're watching KCAL 9 News. And we begin with breaking news at this hour in Silmar. Police pursuit has just ended with several people being injured at in an accident there. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Gonzalez in from Mia Lee. Let's go right upstairs to Larry Welk aboard Sky 9 for the latest on this. Larry? Well, Dave, a horrible situation here. LAPD, Foothill Division, a very short pursuit. We don't even know what the suspects were wanted for. They were coming up here to Drone Field near Polk up here in the city of Los Angeles, the Silmar section and the suspect vehicle collided with that minivan SUV uh, vehicle right there that you see, and it was absolutely uh, T-boned by this car. Look over at the suspect's vehicle. That was smashed up, and uh, the suspects were immediately taken into custody for a time they were trapped inside the vehicle. There are a total of six injuries here, including two suspects, but one of those injuries is a three-month-old child that is suffering from severe trauma. An air ambulance, let's go to the tape from just a few minutes ago, an air ambulance has just landed in a nearby junior high school, and uh, L.A. City Fire landed helicopter fire two in that uh, uh, the, G, uh, the park of that school, and they were able to load that three-month-old patient along with that patient's very distraught mother, and they are being flown right now over to Children's Hospital. But back at the crime scene, we can show you here that uh, the pursuit lasted only a couple of blocks, came up uh, Polk Street, and then at Drone Field, a horribly violent collision that resulted in four people in that SUV being injured, two suspects. The suspects, again, were trapped inside. L.A. City Fire had to take them out. Once they were treated, they were handcuffed to the backboard, and now they are also en route to a local hospital. But just a horrible situation up here in Silmar, as the investigation is now going to start into uh, why the suspects were running and exactly what caused this accident. But first, they have to treat these patients and get everybody. They're bringing in a second air ambulance for another critically injured patient believed to be somebody that was in that SUV. That's the latest from Silmar. I'm Larry Welkin, Sky 9. Back to you in the studio. All right, Larry, you said that there are four then uh, civilians or, 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 or bystanders who were ended up in the wrong place in this, right? And two suspects also injured. That's right. It was two people uh, that were being told that were in the uh, small vehicle over to the right side of your picture. We'll show you that car. And you can see the extent of the damage and just how far away that car ended up. Uh, that's about 50 yards, 40 to 50 yards away from where that minivan is. So it was a very violent, or uh, SUV rather. So it was a very violent collision. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see that some of the uh, car there was uh, actually taken with the SUV. Uh, from the suspect vehicle, but the extent of the collision was so violent that the suspect vehicle ended up far away. Now, the LAPD immediately set up a perimeter. They tried to uh, not only get help to those folks that were inside the SUV, but they didn't want any of the suspects that may have survived the collision or gotten uh, out of the collision. They didn't want them to escape, so they immediately set up a perimeter. Now we're being told that all suspects are in custody. It was just the two inside, and they have been injured. Again, uh, treated here at the scene and handcuffed to the backboard uh, because of the extent of the injuries here. All right, thanks for that, Larry. Welcome aboard Sky 9. We'll keep Larry over the scene there, trying to gather some more information. As he said, six injuries in this, two of them the suspects, and uh, four people who were just uh, onlookers happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time there. We'll try to get some information. We hope to uh, have a telephone call here in just a few with uh, an official get some more details on what happened there. In the meantime, our other top story this afternoon, Los Angeles County Sheriff Sergeant and former school principal are on trial today, accused of accusing his teenage son. Today, testimony continued with the boy actually taking the stand. Dave Lopez live right now in Newport Beach with more on this case. Dave, well, Dave the 16-year-old son continues on the stand under tough cross-examination has been going on all day long. Among many things, he has admitted that he is a habitual liar, that he lied to his parents, that he stole from his parents, that on occasion he would physically abuse his mother, and that he would practically never listen to his parents and do exactly the opposite of what they wanted. And yet, a jury of seven men and five women must decide if what the parents did to their son was abuse, 
or tough love. They are suspended without pay from their jobs. Grady Mashnick, an L.A. County Sheriff deputy, and Debbie Mashnick, a former elementary school principal. They are both looking at a possible three years in state prison for conspiring to mistreat their teenage son. Television cameras are allowed to cover this case except when the 16-year-old boy is on the stand. We also cannot record his voice. There is no dispute of what his parents did to him over a two-year period. Locked him out of the house, made him sleep outside with the dog, made him use the bathroom in the park across the street rather than inside the house, wake him up at four in the morning by pouring a bucket of ice water on his head and putting dog feces in his book bag when he wouldn't clean up after the dog. But the allegation is emotional um, abuse. That is not physical abuse, but emotional abuse. We know that it's not too great a punishment because he selected it. Defense attorney John Barnett spent the morning grilling the 16-year-old about all the times he disobeyed his parents and stole from them. He hammered in on the time when the young boy stole $200 from his mother to buy a CD player and then convinced one of his friends to make up a story on where he got the money. Question, so you got someone to lie for you? Yes. Why? I was confused. And you also lied to the DA investigator. I don't know. You don't know? I don't remember that far back. I don't know what was in my head. Maybe in my head I had an explanation for it. I can't remember. It's necessary to show the length and breadth of his ability to lie and to lie uh, convincingly to others. The defense argument is the parents were at their wits end, dealing with an undisciplined teenager who would do nothing to mind them. But does the law excuse them for what they did? That's what a jury must decide. Testimony will continue for at least another week. Just a few minutes ago, the 16-year-old was asked, uh, did your parents tell you that you would have to stay sleeping outside if you didn't bring your grades up? And he said yes. And then he produced his grades, an F and three Ds. Reporting live from Newport Beach, I'm Dave Lopez, CBS 2 News. Excuse uh, me, KCAL 9. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks for that, Dave. Prosecutors today say they'd like actress Winona Ryder to get probation when she is sentenced this Friday for shoplifting at that Saks Fifth Avenue. District Attorney Steve Cooley spoke with celebrity justice reporter Pat Lalama about what he wants for Winona. If there's not an acceptance of uh, some pretty serious terms and conditions of probation, then jail time might be appropriate. That's L.A.'s top prosecutor tough talking about Winona Ryder's future. She faces sentencing for conviction on two felony counts for stealing nearly $6,000 worth of merchandise from Saks Fifth Avenue. What happens to Ryder on sentencing day will be entirely up to Judge Eldon Fox. But what the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office recommends carries a lot of weight. Narcotic evaluation, perhaps a, a drug program of some sort maybe some psychotherapy, some sort of um, program to deal with uh, her tendency to take out appeals to people's property without paying for it. Cooley wants some serious community service for Ryder, no red carpet affairs. I think substantial community service, uh, to make an example of her, um, the kind of community service that's not her donating her time to some cause, but the kind of community service that everyone else who gets community service gets. Such as? Uh, such as working in a, 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 a hospital, you know, helping other people, working in a, a domestic violence uh, shelter, uh, so helping, real helping those community victims. service, real, not, real, not going real to a community fundraiser service. and shaking hands no, with people? No, no, uh, no uh, benefit concerts for some hand-picked cause. Cooley thinks the only way Winona can pay her debt to society is to live up to every condition of a tough probation or trade in the designer clothes for jail garb. What's really important here is that Ms. Ryder accept responsibility and be held accountable for her criminal acts. For not accepting responsibility, not being accountable, uh, then you may have to do some jail time and, and sit there in jail and, and think about it. So it's not out of the question? It's up to the judge. So it's not out of the question. And I think that um, that question is an open question, still to be resolved after the, um, the judge receives information from the three traditional sources, the defense, the prosecution, and the probation department. Ryder is scheduled for sentencing on December 6th. I'm Pat Lalama with Celebrity Justice for KCAL 9 News. There you go, and if you're uh, into it, you can get more Celebrity Justice every night right here in KCAL 9 at 11.30 if you stay up that late.
Michael Jackson was back in court for that breach of contract suit today, but the so-called baby dangling incident just won't go away. My child. I love my children. That was Jackson's only comment over the controversial incident. Jackson was wearing only one shoe, reportedly because his foot was swollen from a spider bite. Once on the stand, Jackson apparently began screeching and making faces at the courtroom observers. $21 million lawsuit alleges the King of Pop backed out of a couple of Millennium concerts. Singer says the promoter actually canceled the shows. Pressure is on the new L.A. police chief following a new wave of gang violence. This afternoon, Chief William Bratton laid out his plans to combat gang violence. There were more than 35 killings in South Los Angeles alone in the past few weeks. Total so far this year, citywide, 615. Bratton told community leaders and citizens that he plans to stop the bloodshed. You're interacting with the federal agencies in this city. I'll be meeting shortly with the U.S. attorney for the city. We are seeking to enlist their efforts in a similar way to what the federal government did in New York City in attacking the five mafia crime families. The chief says dozens of officers have already been moved from low crime areas to the high crime and gang infested areas. Here we are three weeks before Christmas and the place they call home is gone. Coming up next year we'll have the search search on for the arsonist who set fire overnight to a Southland apartment complex. And this. This George Michael music video could end up costing him millions of dollars in court. We'll explain that coming up next. And she sings, she acts, and now superstar Athalia starting an all-new business venture. We'll tell you about that. Stay with us. On the next Inside Edition, after all his bizarre behavior with his children, Michael Jackson's back home and back in court. And Inside Edition is there. Plus, couples rate lingerie for sexiness. They don't always see things the same way. Next Inside Edition, today at 3.30 on KCAL 9. He said, I got you. I'm coming for you. What drove ex-lovers to threaten each other? I did not know where my daughter was. Judge Judy. Tonight at 6 on KCAL 9. Okay, bottom line, how much do I got to give Uncle Sam? No! I don't have any more receipts. Look, you're the tax expert. Yeah, we still have it. I don't even think it still runs. If you always seem to come up short on tax deductions, why not take advantage of a tremendous opportunity to lower your tax liability? Donate your vehicle to Children's Fund. You'll help families in need, and you'll receive up to maximum Blue Book value. Even the towing is free. Just call 800-572-LIFE. Interest rates are lower than ever. How much can you save by refinancing? Call and find out. You've got the green light. I refined my first mortgage to a 15-year loan at a really low rate. Find out what you can save with no upfront cost or obligation. Call 866-66-FASTER. My monthly payments are staying about the same, but the house will be paid off at about half the time. 866-66-FASTER. You've got the green light. Are you thinking about making a career change? Want to know where the hottest, most in-demand jobs are? I bet you'd like to know the starting salary of these jobs. Westwood College of Technology has designed this information package called the Career Starter Report. It's free, and it's designed to help you make an informed career decision. Make an appointment now to get your free copy of the Career Starter Report. Call toll-free 888-887-6511. That's 888-887-6511. Call now. Four families are homeless this afternoon after someone set fire to their Rancho Cucamonga apartment building. Started around 1 o'clock this morning in the carport area of the building on Cornelian Street. Just it moved quickly, though, to the floor above it. Despite the intensity of the flames, it took only 20 minutes for crews to knock the fire down. But by then, one apartment completely destroyed and the others were badly damaged. I was dead asleep and all I heard was a boom. Woke up. Woke up my friends and, you know, whoever did it out there, you know, it's all right. It's, it goes around, comes around. Everyone was able to safely escape without injury. Now investigators collect evidence that may help them find who started the fire. The Red Cross is helping to relocate the folks who actually lived inside the building. George Michael will now face a multi-million dollar slander lawsuit. A federal appeals panel today cleared the way for a Beverly Hills cop to sue the singer. Officer Marcelo Rodriguez sued Michael in 1999 
after the pop star mocked him in a music video about his arrest for lewd behavior in a public restroom. The suit had been thrown out when a judge ruled that the officer is a public figure and, by law, not entitled to sue. However, today's decision means that he can go forward now with his $10 million lawsuit. Michael pleaded no contest to a charge of committing a lewd act and was fined $810 in order to perform community service. Well, that ship has set sail again. Carnal, Carnival's fascination has begun a new cruise while health workers try to determine what made passengers on board sick in the first place. One of the very latest on that. Also coming up, not everyone will enjoy a hot holiday meal this season. Local food banks need help right now. We'll have details on that coming up. I want to design a logo that speaks for itself. I want to create an image that makes people feel. Innovation. What does it mean? In graphic design at the Art Institute, it's knowing how to make the best use of your talent and technique. It's making technology work to your advantage. But most of all, it means being the creative professional you've always wanted to be. Graphic design. The Art Institute of California. 1-800-886-1039. How's it going, Bob? Not bad. I'm shopping for a new home loan. Excuse me. I happen to be a loan officer at the bank, and right now we're giving away a free toaster just for applying. Looking for a whole new way to get a mortgage? Call or log on to Ditech.com now for today's low fixed rate. Call Ditech.com. Good idea. Ditech.com. Call 1-800-71-FIX. Hey, hey, how about a blender? The symptoms started when I was younger. Cramps, bloating, constipation. I didn't know what caused it. Over the years, it got worse. Now I have a diagnosis, IBS. I have my own business, so missing work is a problem. But lately, I'm having trouble functioning. If you've been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome, call 888-STUDY-GI to learn about a research study testing an investigational IBS medication. I called and pre-qualified for the study. Auto insurance specialists. Real people talk about real value. I saved about $400. And they were able to double my coverage and save me almost $1,000. With AIS, I saved $1,200 a year. I saved $600. They saved me over $200. With AIS, we saved uh, $800, bucks, which is just absolutely incredible. Thanks, Thanks AIS. AIS. Call AIS for your free rate comparison. Call in the next 20 minutes and get your free gas card with your rate comparison. Call 800-772-4AIS. We have a little more for you now in a breaking story we told you about at the top of the hour. A police pursuit that ended with several injuries. Larry, Hulk, Larry Welk is overhead with a little more for us. Larry? Well, Dave, initially we were told that there were two suspects. Now we're being told there were four suspects in a very short pursuit here in Silmar on Polk Street. And it ended at Dronefield. This is a suspect that's being loaded onto an L.A. City fire helicopter right now. If you look closely, you can see he's handcuffed there. His right hand, the left side of your picture, is handcuffed to the backboard. We'll show you a tape from just a few minutes ago. Unfortunately, one of the two victims in the SUV was a, a three-month-old child who we understand has suffered some major trauma, possibly the loss of one arm. Again, a three-month-old uh, was transported already by helicopter LA City Fire over to Children's Hospital. The investigation now into why the suspects were running. But again, two, uh, four suspects and two other injuries, a three-month-old child and somebody else in an SUV. That's the latest from Silmar. I'm Larry Welk at Sky 9. Back to you in the studio. Three months old. All right. Thanks for that, Larry. The third cruise ship to be infected with a nasty virus is cruising at sea again this afternoon. And so far, there are no new reports of sick passengers. The Carnival Line Fascination returned to Miami yesterday with nearly 200 sick passengers and crew members. Centers for Disease Control is still examining those cases. It appears to be uh, slightly different than the Norwalk virus, which had been identified as the culprit on a couple of other ships. Carnival put the fascination back to sea today after disinfecting the ship. The Disney and Holland American ships are still docked. Those were the ships that involved the other cases there. Josh is standing by with a quick look at your weather. Josh? 
Well, they have plenty of sunshine out there. We started off with some clouds this morning, and it kind of kept our temperatures down today. But we will warm up a little bit as we head towards tomorrow. 66 right now in San Luis Obispo, 63 up in Santa Barbara, 62 in Oxnard, 67 in Fullerton, and 63 down in San Diego. So 60s across the board. We have a ridge of high pressure that's been affecting us, and you can see 72 in El Centro right now, 63 in Needles, 57 up in Bishop. And that high pressure is what's keeping us sunny today, and it's actually very pleasant. The height of it probably the next couple of days. We should get up into the low to middle 70s at least by tomorrow. Then we're going to be watching this area of low pressure make its trek towards the Southland, and with it, the chance for rain force. There's the low that I was talking about there. Way back here. It's going to push in by Friday night and Saturday morning. And yes, we do have a chance for some light measurable rain. Probably no real big rain maker on this one. And it's moving fairly quickly, not like the last couple of systems that we had. Okay, the five-day forecast. Here's what to expect. 70s across the board until we get to that little system pushing through. And then we start dropping down. That's Friday night, Saturday morning, 60s middle to upper 60s, and then on Sunday, we should get back up into the 70s. Your overnight lows will stick right around the 50 degree mark, although it will be a little bit cooler on Friday and Saturday. So this is a five-day forecast. It starts off nice and unfortunately kind of stinks things up for the weekend. Back to you, Dave. Oh, thanks for that, Josh. She's always a fashion trendsetter, and now singer Talia is bringing her style to a store near you. We'll have details coming up next about her new business venture with one of the nation's largest retailers. And where do all those candy canes come from this time of the year? We're in the Southland Kitchen where they're made. Stick with us. Welcome to the Great Mortgage Debate. Today's debate, who's got the lowest rates? Hi, Rate Tech. Our car company has great rates for car parts. The trader Mortgages. We, we sell stocks, don't we? Lending seed. What? <laughs> Question? How about you, Instafy? Instafy has the lowest mortgage rates because we'll beat any competitor's written offer guaranteed. I think we have a winner. Call 1-800-INSTAFY. Mom, where's Dad? Bob, dinner. Hey, guys. How are we all doing? My name is Bob. I'll be your waiter. Hey, little guy. This would never happen at home. That's why it'll never happen here. At Hometown Buffet, there's no bob between you and your meal. You get to your table, you go to the buffet, and you choose from a variety of freshly prepared dishes. It's all about food, family, and freedom from waiters. Hometown Buffet. Great choice. I like to shop every day. When I went on chemo, I was exhausted. I couldn't even make it to sales market. If you're on chemotherapy and feel tired, you may be anemic. Talk to your doctor about Procrit. For chemotherapy-related anemia in patients with most kinds of cancer, Procrit can help you regain red blood cells, and more red blood cells can mean more strength. Welcome back, Mrs. Bentini. Procrit is proven and safe. In studies, only diarrhea and edema occurred more often with Procrit than placebo. Buying fresh takes a little more energy, but I love it. my mom got. Share and share alike. Right, Mom? Right. Nice sweater, Grandma. These guys really cleaned up. Gift time at Ross. Big savings for the whole family. Jimmy loves his new bowl. And we didn't do badly either. Ross, much more than low prices. That's a wrap. If you've been injured in an accident, you need a lawyer. When you need a lawyer, all you have to do is call a lawyer. 1-800-A-LAWYER. Whether it's personal injury, an injury at work, or an auto accident, we'll connect you to a lawyer immediately. 1-800-A-LAWYER. A-L-A-W-Y-E-R. Simple, isn't it? Already an international superstar, Mexican singer and actress Talia is now adding fashion mogul to the old resume. The Latina star has signed with Kmart to create a line of Talia brand apparel and accessories. Retailers retailer also reserved the right to create a cosmetics line in the future. I reserve the right as well. She is married to Sony Music's Tommy Mottola and has reached the top of the music charts all over the world. She has starred in several soap operas and considered a household name in over 120 countries. But it's her popularity with the Spanish-speaking Americans that Kmart is interested in. The move is part of Kmart's bid to become the mass merchant for the Latino population. 
Time now for a look at the ahead at the old four o'clock hour coming up. Dave Clark of the newsroom with an update on what's coming up there. Dave? Okay, Dave, coming up at the top of the hour for you, it is a virtual look inside of your body, but there's a new study that says full body scans may just be a total waste of money for some people. Plus, you may be surprised how a low speed crash affects your car. We'll have results of new crash tests for you. And an exciting day for the fans of the late Chick Hearn. We are live at the dedication of Chick Hearn Court. Be sure to join us for the KCAL 9 News at 4. For now, let's go back to Dave and the 3 o'clock report. That sounds like a good one. I'll be watching, Dave. Finally this hour, there is one place right here in the Southland that specializes in a specific holiday suite. Talking about candy canes, the old-fashioned hand-rolled kind, just the way I like them. Lisa Siegel has more from Ontario. If it's a sweet treat, you can bet your last cavity you'll find it at Logan's Candies. But this sugar heaven is a candy cane haven. 45,000 of them sold during the holidays, and they're all handmade. Such a dying art, and it's just, when you see the process, everybody who sees it is in awe, and I wish the whole world could see it. We're going to pour it right onto this table here. Yes, believe it or not, this gloppy mixture does become candy canes, with a little help. It's still very hot, so you definitely have to work with some gloves. Jerry Rowley has made candy canes and exact science. We cook uh, sugar, corn syrup, and water up to about 323 degrees. We pour it out on a table and make a little section of red, a little section of white that we add peppermint flavor to. It starts out yellow, so we actually pull it on the hook to make it white. And then after a period of time, we put together a series of five red and white stripes on one side of a big giant block. And then on the other side, we put a big giant red stripe. And we just start pulling it down skinny in whatever length and size we want from there. And we pull away. Now, out of the 45,000 candy canes Logan's Candies sell during the holidays, they also claim to have the world's largest handmade candy cane. It measures 16 feet long and weighs 36 pounds. It took about 45 minutes of all of us rolling it at the same time so that we wouldn't break it. No breakage here, and who cares? It all tastes the same. So the next time you take a lick from a peppermint stick, remember this. The stripes don't just magically appear, at least when they're homemade. In Ontario, Lisa Siegel, KCAL 9 News. That is cool. And for more information on Logan's Candies and a free demonstration on the making of the candy canes, just log on to the old website. Our address is kcal9.com. Thanks for watching us here at 3 o'clock. Inside Edition is coming up next. Then KCAL 9 News at 4 to follow. We'll also have the latest on the end of that police pursuit we were telling you about in Silmar. Four innocent bystanders injured and a three-month-old among them. We'll have the very latest on their conditions. And is it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.